I'm Aaron from Phonedog.com and part two of the full review of the Samsung Galaxy Rugby Pro starts in just a second, but first I'd love to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this for use in our One Paul Bandit game, which we turn around and give to you for free at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out without dealing with rebates, paperwork, waiting eight to ten weeks for one of those annoying debit cards. At Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out with this device or a One X Plus or a Galaxy S3 or whatever you got you buy this holiday season. You'll walk out if it's a mobile device without dealing with any rebates. Let's take a look. Part two, is the Rugby Pro worth considering? We'll find out in the full video review, which starts right now. Part two of a, of a review, rather, I almost said dogfight. It's been a wild day in terms of doing dogfights with 4G LTE and more, but this is a review of the Samsung Galaxy Rugby Pro. It's a hardcore device on AT&T. When I say hardcore, I mean it's because it's got a durable shell. It's gonna withstand an impact, including when my dumb self dropped it out of my hand, slapped it out of my hand rather by accident, and uh, knocked it over on a concrete while shooting the 4G LTE test earlier today. That said, pretty durable, can't complain there. If you want to know this full specifications, check out part one, but it's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU, a four inch display, a five megapixel camera, and Android 4.0 with TouchWiz. Let's jump right into Quadrant Standard here and take a look, because again, I'm interested to see the Quadrant Standard scores here for a device like this, because I'm finding that a lot of these mid-range devices really have some impressive specs. You know, you may be spending 50 bucks or 100 bucks on a device, but you're getting some decent specifications to boot, including dual core processors, decent displays, decent cameras that have 1080p HD video recording, and of course, Android 4.0, and more, so very impressive all around on that front. And again, still, from what I've seen, pretty impressive Quadrant Standard scores as well. Now this is packing 4G LTE, which we'll cover in just a second, but so far so good with the network. I've worked with this device in a couple of different places in the Dallas Metroplex, and I've been relatively impressed with the performance. I haven't had any issues. Of course, AT&T is based in Dallas, so it's been pretty impressive all around. That said, you know, I haven't had any drop calls or anything like that with this particular device in my testing. That said, 4G LTE, a little bit of a battery hog, but not too bad. I find that uh, with moderate use in this device, I get about 13 to 15 hours, somewhere in that kind of sweet spot of 13 to 15 hours with its 1,850 milliamp hour battery. Now, Quadrant Standard coming in at 5,054 here, so not a bad uh, speed by any stretch of the imagination, especially considering this is really a mid-range, if you can even call it that, a mid-range device. So again, I didn't cover this in part one, so I'll cover it in part two. Customizations. There are seven different home screens on this device, and it brings Android 4.0 with Samsung's TouchWiz user interface to the device. Now, that said, you get some similarities here to the Galaxy S3 and the Note 2, so whether you need a more durable device, you don't want to spend $200 to $300 on the Note 2 or the Galaxy S3, perhaps you're looking for something that's a little bit smaller. This could be a good device for you that brings a lot of those features over to a smaller device. So apps and widgets, for example, we'll go over here in widgets and take a look at what you get. You get the typical Samsung stuff, and of course, you can come down here and scroll quickly through those screens, or you can pinch out and see all your different widgets in one easy spot just like that. So you've got that as well. And another thing I find particularly interesting on this device is when you press the uh, physical buttons, you still get a vibration on this device, which is kind of odd because it's it just creates a strange feeling. I can't really explain it any other way than that. It creates a pretty strange feeling when you press a physical button and still get haptic feedback. I find that to be uh, just relatively interesting. It just feels weird. And then uh, we'll go into speed test and take a look as well. Now begin the test here, we'll load it up on the right server and we'll do a test here. Now AT&T doesn't give any speed guarantees like Verizon does, but I find LTE to be relatively fast all throughout the area. Uh, I'm seeing speeds anywhere from like 12 to 18, what I'm seeing right here, I'm seeing it, I've seen it as fast as 35 to 37 megabits per second, depending on what time I access it. Download right now though, 21 megabits per second, almost 22 megabits per second. Upload 11 megabits per second, so an incredibly fast upload speed, a really nice download speed here on AT&T's LTE. That said, it's not quite as saturated as Verizon's LTE, nor is it available in as many markets. Verizon's is pushing actually as past 400 LTE markets right now. AT&T, not so much. And you know, so you may be in an area where if you're debating a device between maybe AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, you know what, Verizon may have LTE in your area, AT&T and Sprint may not, or vice versa. Maybe AT&T has it. Sprint doesn't, or Sprint has it, AT&T doesn't. Whatever the case may be, there are a couple of different devices that are comparable uh, on the different carriers. There's the Galaxy Victory 4G LTE on Sprint. There's the uh, Galaxy Stellar, which is kind of similar in some ways, uh, on Verizon as well, and it's free to boot. So you've got a couple of different options that kind of bring the best of Samsung to that mid-range device tier, if that's something you want. We'll take a look at camera as well. Five megapixel camera here with 1080p HD video recording. It's not gonna win any awards by any means, 
That said, you know what we'll keep in the family here and pull over the Galaxy Note and I will uh, take a picture here. No physical button. What I do get though is a couple of different options. I get the panorama mode, so who says the iPhone 5 is the only one that can shoot panorama, panoramic shots, excuse me. And then we'll go back here and take a look and go back to single shot. Of course you have smile shot as well where you can uh, pick the best picture with a smile. And I can come in here and just take a couple of different pictures. And then I can go in and take a look. So obviously, you know, overall, system performance relatively responsive. Pinch to zoom is smooth, little to no lag on this device. Portrait to landscape transitions work relatively well. So I think you'll find it's a relatively zippy device all around. The camera's not bad. Now, if you're a photog, you're somebody that likes shooting uh, pictures on your phone on a regular basis, this is not going to be the best camera in the world. So keep that in mind. You know, look for something like the Galaxy S3, the One X, or actually coming out the One X Plus. Look for some of the, you know, one with HTC's Image Sense or one of uh, Samsung's high-end devices because they have fantastic cameras. Not to mention the iPhone 5 as well uh, with its shutter or with its lens rather. So impressive all around on those devices. But that said, not bad at all considering what you get. And again, keeping in mind the price point that you're paying for this particular device. So we'll get out of a dress book here and go ahead and take a look. So I want to show you again. TouchWiz look and feel throughout this device. Phone groups, favorites, and contact tabs. Shortcuts through contacts and of course through the phone as well. When I access that, you'll notice they change slightly to logs, favorites, and contacts. I can set a favorite device or favorite person rather with uh, Alexa Stevenson as my favorite fake person right now. So I can go out of that and take a look at Alexa Stevenson. You can see the star. She's the president of Fake Company Incorporated, as you can see right there. And of course, I have the mobile with the ability to message and call and email groups. And then, of course, notes, point of contact for supplies. Now, again, something I find interesting on all these Samsung devices, and in several, HTC does this as well. Uh, both HTC and LG do this, depending on which carrier they're customizing for. You'll notice that the messaging icon is slightly different on AT&T devices as opposed to other devices like T-Mobile Samsung devices or Verizon Samsung devices. So I always find it fun to kind of see those little carrier customizations just like that. So then that happens to be one of them. It looks very similar across the board there as well. And of course, you've got maps on this device. And we'll go ahead and uh, zoom out here so you can take a look at this. And so bam, you know, again, relatively responsive, incredibly easy to use all around with Skip. And again, Google Maps continues to be an excellent solution, particularly for those people that don't like Apple's uh, iOS maps or perhaps that, you know, they don't care for the other third-party solutions in the various carriers or the various uh, OS stores, if you will. Very responsive here, incredible navigation when it comes to directions. I can find my location, I can type in whatever, uh, Austin, Texas, and we'll bring it up. And of course, I can get directions there. Easy, easy and I can access all those different places. So again, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, it's free. You don't have to worry about spending 10 bucks for a service anymore. It's all on the Android platform, and of course, it's come to several other platforms as well. Windows Phone, and then of course, Apple has their own solution. That said, a really great all-around, well-done job on the Galaxy Rugby Pro. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage, but again, another device, another mid-range device that I really like on AT&T and that is the Samsung Galaxy Rugby Pro. It's an impressive spec list. It's very durable. That's obviously not something that's gonna break the device, but very durable all around and great for those people that want decent specs, but you know what? They need a device that can get them through the day and get them through the hard work that they're doing on a regular basis. It's a good device, I'd recommend it. I've had nothing but good reports from it with the exception of that strange browser thing that happened in part one, but I have a feeling if you didn't watch that, it's because of a little AT&T browser bar down here at the bottom that's causing the issue because now it seems to be working perfectly fine. Keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage. Hit me up on Twitter, phone dog underscore Aaron, Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're giving away awesome smartphones and the greatest tech giveaway ever too. Check it out on Facebook and be sure to hit me up on Twitter and let me know what you think of this particular device. Thanks so much for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.